Well, good morning, St. Paul's. Will you stand with us?
first time at St. Paul's, I just want to welcome you um, and welcome our online family. My name is Ali Gabriel, Gabriel, misspelled my last name, and I'm the director of worship here at St. Paul's, and I just want to welcome you personally if it's your first time or if you've been here for many years. Um, we're just so glad that you are here with us amidst the snow and the cold. We are just so glad to gather in community together this morning. Um, we're going to dive into a new series this morning that Pastor Rob is going to be talking all about. And so I invite you just to lean in, to open your, your mind and your heart about what we're going to be talking about. But before we dive into that and we sing more songs, I just want you to shake a hand, say hi to someone you do not know, say hi to the folks around you, share a hug, share a name, all the things. Well, good morning, online family. I just want to also directly say hi to you guys as well. Thank you so much for tuning in with us, whether if it's your first time watching us here at St. Paul's or you've been one of our online family for many, many uh, services now. Uh, my name is Allie Gabriel, and I just want to say good morning to you. Um, it is, is it snowing where you are at online? Let us know in the chat. Are you excited for the new year? Is there anything that you are carrying into the new year that you are excited about, whether it's a new habit, a new reading plan or are you just going to carry on through as normal? I just want to know. I know for me, I'm going to try to read more this year. So let us know. Is there something that you're starting new this year? We are so glad you guys are tuning in with us. Please know if you have a prayer request, you can drop it in the chat this morning. Um, we are praying for you guys actively. Every Tuesday, we pray for our online family. If you have a personal prayer, you can send that to Pastor Mark at spldecator.org. Please know that we will respond and we care for you guys and we love for you so much. Well, before we continue, let us bow our heads in prayer. God, I thank you this morning uh, just for this time. God, I thank you that we get to praise you. Lord, we get to praise you everywhere that we are because we know that you are with us always. But what a gift it is to be able to walk into a building and have community, have fellowship. I realize um, that that is just such a gift that we have. And so, Lord, I pray that we lean into that today. Be with us as we praise you through prayer, God, through worship, through music, through scripture. This is all for your glory, God, all for your honor and for your name and your name alone. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts for what you have for us. May we come eager to know you more, God, each and every day. Lord, we were built to worship you. We were created to respond to your glory and to your greatness, God. So I ask that we lean into you this morning. Lord, I thank you and I love you. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Let's sing.
on church all together. And all my life you have been faithful. Even in the dark you have. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am. We give it all to you. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. be seated. And Lord Jesus, I just thank you. You have been so good. We have experienced your goodness, whether we realize it or not throughout our life, Lord. You are so faithful in your mercy and your grace and your love. It's new every day. Your gifts that you have for us, they're new for us each and every day. And here today, Lord, as we gather together, you come to pour them out generously to us once again. And so we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that here in a few moments, we're gonna have the opportunity to meet with you in this unique way, in this Holy Supper, the foretaste of the beauty of life and the feast to come with you for all eternity, that here and now you break in and your grace breaks in and your mercy and the life that you have for us, it breaks in here. And so Lord, we just thank you for this amazing gift and for this assurance of your presence, of your forgiveness, and of the life you have given to us. Lord, bring that same assurance to those who are in need of healing right now. We pray, especially today for Michelle Carmichael, for Richard Schneider, for Dean Gerhardt, for Tom Wilson, Pastor Gary Tricky, Karen Wendell, Tonya Goldenstein Jacobson, Lori Eddings, uh, Sam McGrath, and Lord, all who are on the hearts and minds of your people. You know who they are, Lord. You know the need that they have and you are able to bring healing and so, We pray for that healing, Lord. We entrust them to your care that you would bring that healing according to your will. And Lord, as they wait on that, may you give them hope, may you give them peace, may you give them joy. And Lord, I pray for the family and friends of Tom Ramsey as they mourn uh, the loss of him in their life and pray that you would uh, surround them with your love and your care, bring them comfort in the hope of Jesus and as his resurrection it declares that all who trust and believe in him uh, would have that everlasting life. And so Lord, uh, walk with them. And Lord, at the same time, we celebrate with uh, those in our midst who are marking milestones. And today we just celebrate and rejoice with Flo- Floyd and Carol de Klerk as they celebrate 60 years of marriage together, Lord. And how amazing that is. We thank you for the ways that you have worked in their lives. Uh, to bind them together by your love. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to work in them and through them uh, to bind them together, to lead them forward as they continue to grow in their relationship with one another, but also with you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to to work in us, to use us in, in mighty ways to impact this community for its good, but also for your glory, Jesus, that more might come to know who you are through us that even if we're part of one part of that, of nudging someone one step closer to you, Lord, that we would do that, that we would be bold and would see that opportunity you give us each and every day, lead us to show your love in all that we say and all we do and how we treat people. And Lord, um, continue to bring a harvest beyond what we could imagine or ask for. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to partner with Uh, and be a a place for upward sports, upward basketball and uh, the weeks ahead. And we pray, Lord, that that uh, wouldn't just be about basketball uh, and growing those skills and and being physically active, but also, Lord, we know that your word will be proclaimed there, that the love of Jesus will be shared there. And we pray that it would work in the hearts of those kids, those families, uh, and that you would show us the opportunities we have there even to uh, share of, of the goodness it is the goodness there is found in life with you, Jesus. All these things we pray in your mighty and powerful name. And we pray that prayer that you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And 
forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Lord Jesus, as we prepare to come and receive this amazing gift to meet with you personally here, Lord, we, we recognize our desperate need for your forgiveness and life that we have sinned against you and what we've done and what we've thought and what we haven't done. Lord, that we haven't honored you as Lord in our life and we haven't loved others like you have loved us. So Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We joyfully and expectantly come here knowing that you have promised as we confess and acknowledge our need for forgiveness that you generously pour it out. And here in this supper is one of those places that we receive that forgiveness and new life. So Lord, help us to believe it, to receive it, to trust that it's true. Your promises here declared to us, they are true and sure because you are a faithful God. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, friends, we remember together that on the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We truly believe that our Lord comes to meet us here, that we receive not only bread and wine, but his very body and blood, and that through this, he pours out his forgiveness and new life to us. So if this is what you believe, we invite you, come receive this precious gift of our Lord and Savior. Welcome friends to the Lord's table.
And now may this true body and blood of our Savior, Jesus, may it strengthen you and preserve you. May it assure you of his promises for you that you are forgiven and set free and that you are a beloved child of the Most High God. Go in his joy and in his peace. Amen. We're gonna take a, an opportunity here in response to the goodness and grace of our God to uh, give back to him what is but his own, a response of love, uh, giving of our tithes and offerings. And while we do that, we're gonna have our announcements and our uh, kids word that are gonna be playing. Welcome home church. Whether you've been here many times or today is your first time, we are so glad to have you with us. This weekend, we kicked off the 2023 season of Upward Basketball and Cheer with team and parent meetings, and we're excited to see what's ahead. Don't miss the incredible opportunity to build up the youth of our community and love 217. Be a part of the team serving here at SPL to help through the season, Saturdays through March 11th, as we host the third grade, fourth, fifth grade, and sixth through eighth grade games here. Consider making a big impact for Jesus on the kids of our community with just an hour or two of your time. Connect with me or Pastor Mark or by signing up in the fellowship area today to get started. St. Paul's Early Learning Center would also like to welcome you to connect with families and be a blessing to many more as they host a pancake breakfast here on Saturday, January 21st in the dining room. All are welcome and invited to come that morning for delicious pancakes and sausage to enjoy. Donations received will be gathered to provide scholarships for students of the ELC. For more information and for ways to support the center, please connect with Jamie Stanzioni at 217-424-9183. Right now is the right time to get equipped to make a difference in your relationship with God and others. Register now for the six-week winter session of F3 Family Faith Formation, beginning this week, Wednesday, January 11th. With multiple offerings available for every age and stage, you can engage in Bible study, contagious faith, I said this, you heard that, or your beautiful purpose. Youth and kids can also connect in classes from SPL Kids and SPL Youth meeting on Wednesdays through February 15th. Dinner is at 5.30 p.m., classes at 6.30 p.m. Register now by visiting the table in the fellowship area or by connecting online at spldecatororg slash forms. And if you have not yet been a part of the Rooted experience at SPL, please don't wait any longer. Get in on this winter session to reconnect with your faith and discover fresh direction in your life while also strengthening your relationship with God and others. For this 10-week session, times are available on Sunday afternoon, Thursday midday, or Thursday evenings. Find the day and time that works best for you. Learn more and register today at spldecatororg slash forms. All of the details about this and more are available in your worship guide and at spldecatororg slash church online. And friends, we love to know you're worshiping with us. So if you're here for the first time, please take a moment to complete a first-time guest card and return it to our Welcome Center for a special gift. If you already consider yourself family, we're so glad. Please complete a Connect card here in person or online. And as always, let us know how we can be praying for you. Hey friends, today we're talking about a big word, sacrament. Can you say that with me? Sacrament. Good job. Sacrament is a churchy way of describing something that God uses to show us that he loves us and he forgives us. God shows us his forgiveness by using real life objects like water and bread and wine. And when that water and the bread and the wine get combined with God's word, something very special happens. Hmm. Have you ever seen these objects anytime during church? You might have seen the water used for a baptism. The water shows us how Jesus washes away our sins. And you might have seen bread and wine that look like this, used for communion. The bread and the wine show us that Jesus gave us his body and blood on the cross for our forgiveness. So anytime you hear God's words from the Bible with your ears, and you see water, bread, and wine with your eyes, pay extra close attention. God is about to do something really cool through a sacrament. See ya. 
So God is going to do something really cool, right, in the sacrament. That's what we're going to talk about here today is the sacraments. But before we get started, I want to highlight just a couple of announcements if you didn't hear them. First of all, F3 is starting this Wednesday. So if you haven't signed up for an F3 class, we encourage you to do so. What a great opportunity it is to come together around a meal on a Wednesday evening, have fellowship together, but also then study God's word. The classes are listed on the table outside the sanctuary here. Go and look at those before you leave today and sign up for one of those uh, and join us on Wednesday evenings. Also, today we could use your help. Right after the end of this service, we're going to be taking down all of the Christmas decorations. We could use lots of hands to get this done. If we have lots of people here, guess what happens? <laughs> it makes it fast and easy, right? So we encourage you to stay and help us out just for a little while. If we have enough people here, it shouldn't take more than 45 minutes or an hour to get everything down. So we encourage you to join us if you could. So grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you can hear, my voice isn't the greatest. I apologize for that. Last Sunday, I didn't even have a voice. And uh, after all of going on today, my voice doesn't feel that strong. So I pray that it actually holds up as we go through today. But we have a great message today as we continue to move forward. And if you are here for uh, kids... Kids ages four to six, you do have SPL Littles. We encourage you to head back and back. Kristen's waiting there as well, so we can head back to your time. But as we get started, we're going to talk about the gifts of God and the great gifts that he gives us right here in this worship service. Because whether you realize it or not, God promises that in worship, in his church, at this moment, you are receiving the gifts of God. Now, for some of you today, this message is going to be sort of a repeat. It may be something that you've heard before. For others, this may be something new as we talk about the gifts of God and what we would call the sacraments and the means of grace. But for all of us, hopefully this is a time for us to really re-again, re-engage what it means to be here in worship and to receive God's gifts. To be reassured once again of all that God does for us and how he promises to meet us right here and to bless us in ways that we can only imagine. So today as we go through this, bear with it if it seems a little teachy, but we hope that the Spirit works so that you learn and grow through the words that are proclaimed. See, my journey is something that's somewhat unique. As many of you know, I, I didn't believe at all and actually denied who Jesus was until I was 23 years old. I actually, you know, would tell people that they were crazy to believe in Jesus. And, and it wasn't until the Spirit started working through my wife's family, working in me, and hearing the gospel message through the live word that God has. And by the way, this is the live word of God, right? We know that it is active and alive. And we go to this book, why? Because it is the greatest book ever written. And every word of it is true. Can we say Amen. And so everything that we pull from here, we know is what God wants us to learn and what God wants us to know. And so my journey was, as I got into the book a little bit more, I started saying, this is amazing what God is saying. And I started hearing what, what was promised in worship and how God promised to be right here with us right now, that it is through the means of grace that he gives to us, through the sacrament of the altar and through baptism in his word, that God promises to be here with us today, right now. And it was through all of that that it went, this is amazing that I can truly come here and meet God and not just feel like God is out there somewhere else, but truly know that he promises to meet us here. That made all the difference to me in my faith journey. And I know from other people that I've talked to as well, as they were coming to faith that I've worked with through the years, that the understanding of the sacraments and the means of grace that we teach within our church body, that that is what scripture teaches. And with that being the case, it makes all the difference in the world of understanding what God is doing and what God does for us each and every day. 
See, we truly know that God's word is alive and that the spirit is alive. And we believe in the Holy Spirit and the work it does through the work of the gospel. We believe that the Holy Spirit, and we confess that, that he calls us by the gospel, that he enlightens us with his gifts, and therefore he sanctifies us, and that's that fancy word for makes us holy, and keeps us in the true faith forever and ever. The gospel by which the Holy Spirit calls us is in one sense, it's the Holy Spirit itself, and in Holy Scriptures, yes. But it tells us the good news about what God has done, about his great love that he has for each one of us, and how he has accomplished and shown his great love through the work of Jesus Christ. But see, God believes that there are ways that he wants to share his grace with you and I that we call these the means of grace, that God chooses to use means in this world to impart his grace on all of us as believers. These are the tools and the instruments by which God gives us the gift of his undeserved love. The means of grace is God's instrument by which all spiritual blessings are bestowed upon us sinners. In the Lutheran Church, we teach that the means of grace are the ways that the Holy Spirit creates faith in the hearts of Christians, forgives sins, and gives them eternal life. See, in these means of grace, God is active, he is working, and he is there. The means of grace that we hold up within the church is the word of God and the sacraments the sacraments of baptism, and the Lord's Supper. All of these three, we say, are so important, and that's why in every worship service that we have, we hold up God's word as true and holy and inerrant, and the great blessing that it is. That we also hold up the Lord's Supper as a, a key part of our service because God promises us to meet us right here. And in baptism... That's where God creates faith in individuals and welcomes them into his family. So we have two sacraments that we rec recognize in our church body, and we'll share with you in just a moment the definition of a sacrament so you understand why these two are the ones that we hold up. The two that we have is baptism and the Lord's Supper. And our loving God not only provides the written and spoken word, but he also attaches that word to things and to people that we can see, hear, smell, touch, and taste. And when the word is so attached to these concrete things by God in order for his church to give the forgiveness of sins, well, we call them a sacrament. See, isn't it amazing that God can actually take his promise of forgiveness, his promise of love, his promise of grace as well, and attach them to something that you and I can actually touch and feel? To know that when we receive those, that this is truly real, and we know it's a promise that we can uphold because God holds it for us. See, the definition that we use is this. The sacrament is instituted and commanded by God, first of all. It is something that God actually says and commands us to do. For instance, we know in Matthew 28, God says, Go and make disciples of all nations. What? <laughs> Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when he says that, if you look at the true understanding of how that sentence is written, it is not a suggestion, it is a command that he is saying, you do this. And so therefore, it is a command by God. It also promises forgiveness of sins. A sacrament has a visible element. What is the visible element in baptism? Water. What is it in the, in the, in the Lord's Supper? Bread and wine. But then also it's always joined with God's word. And that's how we define a sacrament. That a sacrament is truly something that is instituted by God, brings forgiveness of sins, has a visible element, and is joined with God's word. So therefore our sacraments that we recognize are two, baptism and the Lord's Supper. 
Now, it's interesting, though, as we talk about the means of grace, and we talk about these sacraments that God has given us, there was actually a huge battle that went on in the early part of the Reformation. Luther himself, he defended the classical thought of what truly the real presence of Christ was like in the Lord's Supper. He truly defended the idea that truly God promises to be right here in, with, and under the bread and wine. But there was another theologian at the time called Swingley. And he, on the other hand, argued for a symbolic representation of Christ at communion. For Luther, the sacrament of Christ instituted basically the means of grace. That truly God was active in those elements that were visible to you and I. That it means that the believer received by faith the promises of God in those moments. For Swingley, he rejected that idea. Instead, he adopted what was called an ornamental view of sacraments, that the sacraments were not a means of grace where God would give his grace to his believers, but it was only an act of obedience and love that was expressed by the individual believer that God's grace did not come through the elements. They were merely symbols of God's unseen direct activity with believers. See, this is the difference that we have in the church today as many different churches look at the Lord's Supper and baptism in two different ways. The difference is this, is that we see truly in the Lutheran view that there is a sacramental presence within the Lord's Supper and within baptism. What we mean by that is God is truly present there and that God's grace is extended through those elements as a means by which God's grace is received to us. That it is truly an active thing that, trans- that, is a, that happens in that meal, that happens in baptism, where God is active doing work by extending his grace to us through those elements in those moments. Other church bodies would say that God's grace is just given to them and that baptism in the Lord's Supper becomes just an expression of love and obedience, that God is not active there at all, that it's truly just symbols of what God's activity has been in the past. And we would say that that is not the case for us today. That truly, if you look at Scripture, which we will do soon, you will see that God promises to be active in each of these sacraments, that God is truly present there, that his means of grace are extended through those elements, and that each one of us, when we receive the Lord's Supper, we once again receive the forgiveness of sins and are assured of eternal life once again. See, Scripture really is where we go to to truly understand the truth of the sacraments because scripture we know is inspired by God and it is inerrant. What makes the Bible without error and perfect for clearly proclaiming all the needs of salvation is the fact that God gave it through his spirit. But truly we know that God's word is true, that that truly it works as a means of grace as well because as the pastor stands here and proclaims the word, that also is active and alive. That as you read the word of God on your own, that the word is active and alive there as the spirit works through the gospel and works through the word. That truly God is present there through the spirit as the word tells us all that we need to know about God and the promises that he has for us. Just listen to these words from Romans. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
For with your heart one believes and is justified, and with your mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew or Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. See, what an amazing passage that is that assures us that it is faith in Jesus Christ that saves. And it is also then in these sacraments that we're talking about that we are also reassured of that forgiveness once again. Thank you. My voice is that bad, huh? It's always great to have elders take care of you, right? So the word of God tells us truly that we can believe because of the spirit working in us and that that's how we really truly gain faith. But we can't forget that in baptism, God promises something else. God promises that in baptism, that he brings faith there as well. See, baptism is really regarded as the entrance sacrament. It replaces the Old Testament circumcision as the entrance into the kingdom of God. In fact, in the church I was at in Wisconsin, when we built our new church, we put the baptismal font right as you entered the church. Why? Because that was a symbol of how you came into being a member of God's family. That you enter the church through baptism. And also it encouraged you that as you entered into the sanctuary every time, that what you would do is you would remember your baptism and that you are a saved child of God. It was also a way that as you exited the church and you passed the baptismal font, that you were reminded once again of how you are called to live as a baptized child of God. But also as a baptized child of God, you have all the promises of God, the forgiveness of sins and eternal life that can help you get through that week. See, truly it is the entrance sacrament. Through baptism, God brings about salvation of the person who is baptized, regardless of their age. They truly receive the forgiveness of sins, rescue from death and the devil, and eternal salvation is given to them. Baptism connects us to Christ, alive with him, and makes us God's children. And the Bible tells us that such faith comes by hearing, yes, that we just heard in Romans. That Jesus himself, though, commands baptism and tells us that baptism is water used together with God's word that brings forgiveness, that brings faith, and brings salvation. And because of this, we believe that baptism is one of the miraculous means of grace through which God creates and or strengthens the gift of faith in a person's heart. And so what you will be seeing us do as we go into this new year is to elevate baptism to a point where we believe it is a key thing for us to celebrate right here in worship because it is God's activity that he is doing, bringing new members to the family. And if you haven't been baptized, we want you to be baptized. If you have not been baptized, we invite you to to seek out one of us pastors and we would be glad to share with you why this is such an important part of your life in faith and something that God calls us to do as we celebrate baptism going forward. Why is baptism so important? Well, listen to these words from God. The first is from Titus chapter 3. We read, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the what? Washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. That's referring to baptism. Whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Baptism. Baptism saves. And baptism is something that we we give to all people as well. Let me listen to these words from Matthew, chapter 28. He says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. 
And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. See, we really take this to be true what he says here, that this is a command for us to go and do. To baptize, what does he say? All nations. And all nations includes children of every age. See, we actually would not say that we baptize children. We do. But what I would say is we baptize people of all ages. Because God wants all people to come to faith and to be assured of the forgiveness of sins. The blessing I know from my life is that I was baptized at 23. Soon after that, my sister was baptized. She's 11 years older than I. A short time after that, my twin brother was baptized. And then when my mom was 77 years old in the hospital, thinking she was going to die, one who denied Jesus and didn't want anything to do with the church called me one day and said, I want to be baptized. 77 years old. Praise God. And right before, right before I left Palm Springs to come here, I was able to baptize an 87-year-old man who said he had never been baptized and believed. See, baptism is for all people. No matter your age, no matter how young, it is God's action in baptism. It is not ours. It is God being active there, not us. And so we believe baptism is that important. The other one we believe that is important as well is the Lord's Supper. And over the next few weeks, you're going to hear more about baptism and the Lord's Supper as we dig into each of these sacraments more. But today, to realize that Holy Communion is really the visible means by which our Lord Jesus Christ forgives our sins and strengthens us in the faith. See, it's amazing that as we receive the Lord's Supper here today, that as we receive his body and blood, that it is through that act that God is once again giving us the forgiveness of sins. He is assuring us of his promise once again of eternal life with him. And it is also during that time that we are strengthened in our faith. So that as we leave here, no matter what we face this week, no matter what struggle you will have, no matter how difficult your week will be, you are reassured of your faith once again in Jesus and you know that he is with you. Because truly we know that Jesus promises to be in that meal, that it is his body and it is his blood. And that through Jesus being in that meal, he promises us that he is with us and that he will never leave us or forsake us. Here's the words that he says in Matthew. He says, now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat this, what is my body? And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured up for many from the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. See, we truly believe this is the true blood and body of Christ. That that is where God meets us because it is tangible. And one of the things you might be sitting is saying, Pastor, why is this important? Why are we spending today talking about the means of grace and the sacraments? And why are we going to spend the next two weeks discussing this even more? Well, I think the answer is pretty simple. The preaching of his word, baptism, and the Lord's Supper are ways that he distributes those gifts in order for us to be blessed as we receive them. And we receive them in faith. 
See, there is nowhere else that you can go to truly receive the means of grace. To receive baptism through the water and the word is done right here in worship. To receive the Lord's Supper, it's done right here every week as we have communion available in one service or another here at SPL. See, truly, this is where God meets us. And this is why it's so important for us to be here every week, week in and week out, is because this is where God promises to be. This is where God promises to meet us. Through the means of grace, his word, baptism, and the Lord's Supper. See, we cannot go back to the little literal cross 2,000 years ago. But you and I, we can come right here now to find Christ where he promises to be in his word and in his sacraments. I pray that you will value the sacraments and the means of grace that much, that you will come here to worship Jesus. Let's pray. Oh, dear gracious Lord, we are so thankful for the gifts you give us, Jesus. That, Lord, you truly give us these tangible items that we can feel, touch, and taste to know, Lord, that you are truly present and that your forgiveness, your eternal life that you promised to us is real. Lord, help us to to feel you more and more and to know that you are here among us and help us value this time together as a community of believers, not just because of the gifts you give us, but because of the gift of brothers and sisters that you give us here as well, that we feel a need to be here each and every week to, to be, feel the blessing of family and friends around us, but also, Lord, to receive your gifts. And so, Lord, today we just say thank you. Thank you for what you've done in the past. Thank you for what you're doing today. And, Lord, we are excited and look forward to what you will do in the future. So, Lord, we just pray this all in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. I invite you to stand for worship.
celebration, he won't fail, he will meet you there. Through the anxiety and the depression that feels like it will not go away, he will meet you there because he will not fail. He's our foundation and so when we have questions, when we have concerns, when we don't know how we're gonna get to tomorrow, he will meet you there. And so through the rain and when the wind comes, he is our foundation, he is our rock. And so even with the tears and with the sadness, we will still rise and sing of who he is. So sing together, we sing this. to gather with those that are near you, whether you came with them or not. Let's join together as a family of believers here and receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Wait, 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 wait. One more thing I wanted to bring up. We had a few other highlights of announcements, but I want you to be aware of this Bible reading plan that we're seeking to do together as a congregation throughout this year. It's a weekly, so there's a Bible verse for each week. There's a devotion that's going to be going along for it with it. It's called Love for All as we seek to grow together and just the love for the people that God puts in front of us each and every day. So check that out. You can grab these from the back table so you can follow along. Once again, devotion on our blog with questions to reflect on or discuss together as a family. Uh, and feel free to share what God teaches you, brings to your mind through that. I'd love to hear that from you. Okay, go to peace. See or serve the Lord. <laughs>
Have a good Sunday. What part are you reading through? Just the first.
Yes, I'll still bless you. In the middle of the storm, in the middle of my trial, I'll still bless you. In the middle of the road, 